This is the Janine Pirro Show. Now, here's Judge Janine Pirro. Welcome back to the Judge Janine Tunnel to Towers Foundation Show. Joining us now is a very special guest, someone that uh, I have had the honor of meeting uh, and working with to a certain extent. Uh, She has experienced something that... uh, no one wants to experience she is the mother of kayla hamilton her name is tammy nobles and tammy nobles has lost her daughter as a result of what has gone on at our southern border and i wanted this morning to bring to you the reality of what is happening as a result of the open borders I didn't just want to preach to you or, you know, tell you about what the law is or what the law isn't. What I wanted to do is have you hear from someone who has literally lost everything in terms of her daughter, her family, as a result of an illegal. So, Tammy Nobles, I want to welcome you to the Judge Janine Tunnel to Towers Foundation show. Uh, And I want to thank you for speaking up. Uh, and are they calling you an angel mom now, Tammy? Yes, they have. Yeah. yeah. You know what, Tammy, I'll let you tell people what an angel mom is. A um, angel mom is a, um, a mom who has lost their child to um, who has had their child, you know, murdered or killed because of the border. And oh. it includes you know, fentanyl, anything that came across the border that shouldn't be here. In the All first right. Place. And folks, Tammy, in her real life, is a realtor in Virginia. She was a uh, volunteer, uh, uh, and she was the president of Down Syndrome Association of Hampton Roads. Um, she was, you know, a normal woman with a normal life with a young daughter by the name of Kayla Hamilton, And Kayla had just graduated from high school and she was going out on her own. And she was amazingly a young woman who had two jobs, not one, and was just starting to spread her wings. Tammy, tell us what happened. Yes. um, We were just, like you said, we were just a normal family. We spent a lot of time um, and hard work getting Kayla the resources and the help that she needed to become independent and we both you know she worked hard at that and and sadly that was all taken away by someone that wasn't supposed to be here uh homeland security is not checking or vetting or background checking anyone um they were allowed him to come over as a unoccupied alien child they did not check you know his that he was a known MS-13 gang member, and he ended up coming across the Texas border and ended up in in the same neighborhood as Kayla, and in the same and in the same mobile home as her because of failures. Okay, and and it, folks, Tammy is talking about what they call an unaccompanied minor, and they're letting them in. And when you say he's an MS-13 gang member, I have spoken with Border Patrol for years, Tammy, uh, about the fact that uh, the Border Patrol is letting MS-13 in because they're not allowed to keep them out. And I remember this from the Obama administration that, that, you know, this was a big issue where MS-13, in order to be initiated, you actually have to kill someone in front of other people. MS-13 is just a violent, uh, medieval, barbaristic, um, inhuman gang. But so Kayla is this young girl and she has a boyfriend now and uh, she's working two jobs and she ends up living with a guy that she's kind of leery of. Tammy, tell us wh- what she told you about him. Well, we thought it was a legit company that was running, that was running out these mobile homes. We found out that the owner did not you know, she took it upon herself to put him in the same mobile home as her. Um, she did not. Kayla and her boyfriend was leery of him. They didn't something. They knew something was off, but they couldn't. And she did not like, you know, that he smoked weed. She didn't like the smell of Aww. it. 
And yeah. she didn't want to say anything because she didn't want to cause any trouble. And her boyfriend didn't want to cause any trouble either. So, um, so yeah, they never said anything. And he was only stay. He 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 was only living there for five days. Um, oh. Nobody was living with him. These owners took upon themselves to rent this room out to him. They had no say in it, and it and it was just it was just crazy. And um, they didn't even have time to go anywhere. And she got off the night shift. And she was sleeping in her bed and he broke into her room, which, you know, a trail, you know, a mobile mm-hmm. home door mm-hmm. is not very, you know, you can do it with a butter knife. Yep. He broke into her room and, you know, w- you know, while she was sleeping and she had to deal with him attacking her and strangling her, you know, can you imagine just waking up yeah. and having that happen to you and you had to fight, you're fighting for your life. And that was the last, and 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 your last moments are just mm. pure, like violent and a, a struggle, and you know that haunts me all the time. You know, just just Damn. imagining what that baby oh. went through those last moments, and oh, that's damn. what people need to know. Like it could happen to anybody. They they don't hit these criminals that are coming across here. The women who are criminals are coming across here. They don't care if you're a democrat or a republican Mm -hmm. they don't know that they don't care they Mm -hmm. will attack anybody when it's possible yeah you know tammy it just breaks my heart every time i hear you talk about this i mean you know kayla is a young girl and uh, she wakes up to a guy that she's kind of been leery of she's just out in the world starting a job with a boyfriend two jobs that's why i'm so impressed with her and she was brutally raped and murdered uh folks he strangled her with a cord uh and he robbed her he robbed her of six dollars and then Um, he raped her after he killed her yeah Yep. Yeah. Uh, he's a sicko. And during the attack, apparently Kayla tried to call her boyfriend for help. I, I guess she reached for the phone and um, the, the, the call went to voicemail. And the voicemail to all my listeners of the murderer, Dirtbag, strangling Kayla was two minutes and 30 seconds long. Yes. So she actually, that's some of the evidence that she left for them was because she was telling them, hey, it wasn't my boyfriend Mm because that's who you think. And it was a struggle on the voicemail and you could hear him hushing her. And near the end, he was telling her sorry in Spanish while continuing doing it. I never listened to the voicemail. I can't. I don't think I will ever listen to the the voicemail of her last moments of her. You know, Tammy, life. I'm sorry to make you go uh, through this. Your message, no, though, but it, yeah, y- your message is an important one. And I, I really, uh, you're reliving this. I mean, you know, for all the days that I was a prosecutor, Tammy, sometimes, you know, I would tell families that telling the story is cathartic. It's therapeutic. You know, um, it, it helps. Um, but I think you're on a mission as a result of this illegal MS-13 gang member killing your daughter, um, who was, how old was she, Tammy? She just, she spent three days being 20. She just celebrated her 20th birthday three days before okay. she was murdered. 20 year old at the beginning of her life and she has to face this kind of assailant. But now you've taken this as a mission Tammy and you and the other angel moms who have suffered an incredible loss of a child uh, are fighting to change the laws. You're fighting to make sure that these individuals who are coming into this country uh, aren't allowed in. I mean, but what can we do, Tammy? What you could do is please, you know, consider who you are voting for. Um, This is very important the reason why i am fighting for this because i don't want any parent to go through the nightmare that i'm going through laws need to change our safety is not being put first at all we are not being 
protected at all. Um, even if you don't, you know, it's not just about, you know, legal immigrants. It's, it's, you know, it's about safety and they put her MS-13 gang member murderer into high school, into two different high schools. Oh, uh, is this People, before he was in a this high was school? After This was after Kayla's murder. When he was a main suspect, they put him in two different high schools and into a group home with other children and put him in a foster home whoa, and whoa, enrolled whoa, whoa, whoa. him. To, okay. Yeah. Okay. But Tammy, <laughs> I, I want, I want, I want my listeners to hear this folks. He <laughs> murders her. He is not arrested immediately. Correct. Tammy. Correct. It took six months because of the DNA evidence. Oh, thank God. Back. Yep. You know, I, I always said DNA is like the finger of God saying you did it, buddy. Uh, okay, so for six months, this guy's illegal. He's an MS-13 gang member. We know that he murdered and then raped a 20-year-old innocent victim. And he then is put into schools and foster care with other children by what, DHS? No, by <laughs> Child Protective Services. How old was he, Tammy? Is he? Supposedly, he was almost 17 when he murdered Kayla. But they cannot prove his actual age. But then Rite Aid <laughs> hired him because, and he told Rite Aid that he was 18 because he had to pay back the smuggler who what smuggling him over here, but he ended up and then he ended up getting apprehended at the border anyway. And he got fired anyway from there. Whoa, 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 Tammy, hold on. So this dirtbag <laughs> MS thirteen gang member, after he murders your daughter and then rapes her, they 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 then put him uh in a home, although he's not yet a suspect in a Greek home, a group home, I should say, and then a secure, which was a secure, alleged secure location. And in the meantime, he's going to Rite Aid and he's getting a job. Well, he, he had, he was trying to get the job before he murdered Kayla. Like when okay. he came up here Okay. and his, and he was living with his half brother, but his half brother couldn't deal with him anymore. Well, actually it started with the spot. Well, the sponsor took him from the border. They don't know who the sponsor was, so they're not verifying sponsors. And he just left the sponsor's house. There was issues. There's issues with the half brother. So the half brother gave, he's the one that called up the rental people, you know, the owners of the mobile home asked that they had a room for rent. Mm -hmm. And then he murders Kayla and then he ends up in a group home and then the foster home with two, um, then he ends up going to two high schools. And like three months later, the sponsor, like in November, um, filed a missing teen report three months after almost three months after he killed Kayla. I think they just did that to cover their butts, you know. Yes, yes. The whole yes. story, I mean, the whole case of her case is all messed up. Like, there's so many failures, and I, it, it's unbelievable. Tammy, we're going to go to a break for just a minute. Um, everybody, stay with us. Tammy's coming back right after the break. This year at Six Flags Great Adventure, Fright Fest is going extreme and more terrifying than ever before with new haunted attractions inspired by Saw, Stranger Things, Army of the Dead, The Conjuring Universe, Trick or Treat, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's terror around every corner with interactive mazes, endless jump scares, and more at Fright Fest Extreme, presented by Snickers at Six Flags Great Adventure, here for a limited time this fall. Get your tickets now at SixFlags.com. This is the Janine Pirro Show. Now, here's Judge Janine Pirro. All right, folks, if you're joining us, I'm speaking with the mother of Kayla Hamilton, Tammy Nobles, who is called an angel mom because she lost a daughter to an illegal immigrant, an MS-13 gang member from El Salvador. Uh, th this is a, a, a mess up of enormous proportions. And before um, I get to what you're doing now. Tell me a little about Kayla. Kayla, um, she wanted to work. Um, she just wanted to do things on her own. 
she was a very happy and energetic um, girl. She loved Jojo Siwa. Um, she was just so, so beautiful on the inside and out. And she wanted to help. She always wanted to help the homeless. She liked yeah. things. She wanted, she loved cats and animals. <laughs> she wanted to work at, um, at first she wanted to be a veterinarian. I told her how much school it was. She said, oh, well, never mind. Maybe I'll just work <laughs> at a shelter. <laughs> Good yeah, thing. we need that too. <laughs> You know, and she was just so loving and, you know, and innocent, you know, um, innocent. She just yeah. living her life. And, you know, and and she I mean, she knew I mean, she wasn't naive, you know, she but she was just so friendly and always looked at the best in people. And because, mm-hmm. you know, you raise your kids to accept many people of many different races, backgrounds and stuff and not judge them. Right. And it seems like that one got her killed. Yep. You yep. know. So All right. You know. So so now they finally get him uh 3 months later and he is arrested and 6 months later. How many months? 6 months. 6. Okay. So 6 months later, uh the dirtbag is arrested and uh he is charged with the murder of Kayla Hamilton, your beautiful 20-year-old daughter. And yes. uh, it, does he end up getting convicted or what happens? No, what happens was the defense kept delaying the trial. Like he had like 11 charges, but of course the all the charges would have gone Come under yeah. first degree murder. Mm-hmm. And so the defense kept delay in the trial and then they took a over i mean they had then they were a year late on filing the motions and then they finally then they pulled the um competent thing that he wasn't competent right that he was incompetent because he wanted to go to trial he thought he was going to get away with this yep he was like oh well if there's not that much evidence i want to go to trial but if there is a lot of evidence i will plead guilty and what happened was the we did do a plea we did give them the option of the plea deal, but he didn't want to take it. It was <laughs> either sliding scale of sixty to eighty, or it was just a, just just seventy, you know, just the. And so, the jail ended up intercepting a letter that um, that Walter Martinez wrote to a pastor in El Salvador, saying confessing that he has committed four mur- four murders and two rapes mm-hmm. which included Kayla in that number and then he, once they intercepted that he he went ahead and took the the plea deal of 70 years all right so right now he's in prison hopefully for 70 years well yeah and then after he serves time here. He's going, supposedly he's going to get deported, but there's no way of, of knowing that he'll get deported. Cause what makes him, I mean, I don't know where we're going to be in that yeah. long, but mm-hmm. I don't want him coming back and try and hurting someone else. I want to be so old that he cannot hurt nobody else. Yeah. But Tammy, now you are, um, you are involved in an organization and you are also suing, which is something that I absolutely love. Tell us who you're suing. We, I am suing the Department of Homeland Security for not making that one phone call that it took the Aberdeen Police Department to make that phone call to know that he was on the list of M- uh, He was a um, MS-13 gang member. And also, he committed crimes in El Salvador in 2020 for illicit gang activity. So he had a criminal <laughs> record already. He was already on the list. And he comes over here. Oh, Department of Homeland Security, um, the, according to Jim Jordan's report, who's been really awesome, yep. said, Homeland Security said, oh, he's a nice boy. And he shows age-appropriate behavior. That's a bunch of crap. Because, <laughs> and yeah. also Department of Health and Human Services, because they did not verify the sponsor that they gave him to. 
They don't right. even know it was aunt, uncle, cousin, male, female. Mm-hmm. And the sponsor didn't even know. Oh, man, I wish I could sue the sponsor, too, but he probably don't have no money because, you know, because they let him go without what's the procedure. You don't let him go. There's you just not do not let him go anywhere he wants. Right. You know, right. I was on a mission to have have someone be held accountable. They need to know what they're doing is wrong and they need to change. And I hope, you know, something will come out of this where they are held accountable. This is not OK. It is not OK to put our safety at risk. We are all at risk because of this open border. And I was on a mission and I, I told my family, well, Walter Martinez picked the wrong child because her mother has a big mouth and I am <laughs> going to take it as far as I can and do what I can for my child and for the safety of others. Well, you know, Tammy Nobles, uh, thank God in in one way that you are on this mission because you not only uh, were a force during the investigation, and I am quite familiar with it, but you're also a force right now in suing the Department of Homeland Security. Whether it, you win or you don't win, what this is reverberating through the, the many communities, law enforcement, real law enforcement, uh, is on your side. Uh, what we're seeing with Homeland Security, Mayorkas, and the open borders, and the, the the lies that the border is secure, the lie that we're vetting these people, the lie that, you know, uh, gang members uh, don't necessarily come here to commit crimes, but they come for jobs. I mean, that's all nonsense. And unfortunately, you've had to live uh, uh, and suffer the consequences of that lie. Uh, we did a special on Fox Nation that I do want to promote right now, and I, I never do this. Uh, it's called Sanctuary America, where folks, you can watch it. You can watch Tammy Nobles tell her story along with other mothers who talk about what has happened, how they were stunned, how they always thought that the government was protecting them uh, in, in sanctuary cities when the truth is the government is protecting the illegal criminal. Before we go, Tammy, I just I just want to give you, you know, a last word that maybe you can leave our listeners with so that they know um, how they can help and what they can do, because people are really upset about this. Um, I would, you know, say, you know, please consider who you're voting for. We need change. Um, we really need to get our country back, really, because it's being run over by illegal immigrants who are criminals. Um, and it's not, has nothing to do with race or anything. These are It has everything to do with criminals. And Kayla? And, yes. And, and you know, you don't. I don't want to see anyone um, suffer what I have or what has Kayla has suffered. She, you know, she really um, suffered the the consequences of this border. All right, Tammy, uh, you are an angel, Tammy Nobles, in more ways than you know, uh, folks. Uh, I want to thank Tammy, uh, and I, I want you to know, Tammy, that uh, many, many Americans salute you for what you're doing. Uh, God bless you. Take care of yourself. Stay in touch. I follow you. You follow me. Uh, yeah. I'd love to be uh, a voice for you wherever I can. And everybody watch Sanctuary America on Fox Nation, uh, and you'll get to see Tammy Nobles and listen to this story. Tammy, God bless you. I love you. Take care of yourself. Love you. Thank you for having me. All right. Take care, baby. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. And never forget, join the Tunnel to Towers Foundation on its mission to do good in honor of America's heroes. Donate $11 a month at T2T.org. That's T, the number 2 T.org. And up next here on the Judge Jeanine Tunnel to Towers Foundation show, I will be speaking with the representative of the 7th District of Florida. He is a very special man. We've got some great guests today. His name is Corey Mills. And like Tammy Nobles, although he has not suffered like Tammy Nobles has, he is trying to make a difference in protecting Americans all over the world. 
coming up right here on the Red Apple Audio Network. This is the Judge Janine Show. 